Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over two worked examples to show you how to do problems involving electron energy level transitions. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get going. Question 1 says part of the energy level diagram for an atom is shown below. X and Y represent two possible electron transitions. So we have energy levels E0, E1 and E2, and then we have two transitions shown by X and Y. And so X shows an electron going from E2 to E1, and Y shows an electron going from E2 to E0. Part A says what is meant by an electron transition? Well remember from the notes that an electron transition is simply just the movement of an electron from one energy level to another. Part B says which transition produces photons of higher frequency? Justify your answer. Well remember that highest frequency means the greatest change in energy, delta E, and that comes from our expression delta E equals HF, which tells us that delta E, the change in energy, is directly proportional to the frequency F. And that means we can say the transition here with the greatest change in energy or greatest energy difference is going to be Y. So we can say it's transition Y. Part C says which transition produces photons of longer wavelength? Justify your answer. Well remember the longest wavelength means the lowest frequency, since from the wave equation V equals F lambda, we have that wavelength lambda and frequency F are inversely proportional. So we have that lambda is proportional to 1 over F, and therefore we can say the lowest frequency means the smallest change in energy, or smallest energy difference. And that comes from our expression again, which we used in part B there, delta E equals HF, which tells us that delta E is directly proportional to the frequency F. So therefore, if we look back at the picture, the transition with the smallest energy difference this time is going to be X. So we can say it's transition X. Lastly, part D says, in which energy level does an electron have to be in order for the atom to be ionized? Well, if we look back at our picture, the highest energy level possible in this diagram is E2, so it must be E2. So we can simply just write E2 here. Question 2 says, in an atom, a photon of radiation is emitted when an electron makes a transition from a higher energy level to a lower energy level as shown. So here is the electron in a higher energy level with a value of minus 5.40 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And when it moves to the lower energy level, it's emitting a photon, and the lower energy level has a value of minus 21.8 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Part A says to calculate the energy of the emitted photon. Well, firstly, remember that the energy of this emitted photon must be equal to the energy difference between these two energy levels. So that means writing down what we know from the question, we can say delta E is what we're trying to find, the change in energy. The upper energy level we could call E2, which is equal to minus 5.40 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And we could call the lower energy level E1, which has a value of minus 21.8 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So writing down our expression for energy difference, we have delta E equals E2 minus E1. And then substituting in the numbers gives us minus 5.40 times 10 to the minus 19 minus minus 21.8 times 10 to the minus 19. And notice how this double negative here will be the same as taking this value plus the 21.8 times 10 to the minus 19. So we'll end up with a positive answer in the end. So putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 1.64 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Part B then says to calculate the frequency of the emitted photon. Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the frequency F. We know the change in energy from part A there is 1.64 times 10 to the minus 18 joules, and Planck's constant H from the data sheet is 6.60 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. So writing down our equation for energy difference or change in energy in terms of frequency, we have delta E equals HF. Substituting in the numbers gives 1.64 times 10 to the minus 18 equals 6.60 times 10 to the minus 34 times F. And to find F on its own, we need to divide both sides by Planck's constant here. So doing 1.64 times 10 to the minus 18 divided by 6.60 times 10 to the minus 34 in your calculator should give you an F value of 2.47 times 10 to the 15 hertz. And lastly, part C says to calculate the wavelength of the emitted photon. Well, writing down what we know from the question this time, we're trying to find the wavelength lambda. We know that delta E, the energy difference, is 1.64 times 10 to the minus 18 joules from part A. We know that Planck's constant H is 6.60 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. And lastly, the speed of light C is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And these last two constants are on the data sheet. Writing down our equation now for energy difference or change in energy in terms of wavelength, we have delta E equals HF, which is equal to HC over lambda. And remember this part of the equation was derived in the theory video. So rearranging the wave equation V equals F lambda, we can get F equals V over lambda, which is the same as F equals C over lambda. And then we're just replacing that F there with C over lambda, where we're using C because we're talking about light here. So remember we're trying to find wavelength lambda, so substituting in the numbers gives 1.64 times 10 to the minus 18 equals 6.6c times 10 to the minus 34 
times 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by lambda. And then doing the numerator in your calculator and swapping these two variables round would give us lambda equals this value divided by 1.64 times 10 to the minus 18. So doing that in your calculator should give you a value of lambda equals 1.21 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, which is the same as 121 nanometers. And lastly, note that we also could have used v equals f lambda to calculate the wavelength here. So because we knew the frequency from part B and V is the speed of light C, then we could work out what the wavelength lambda is. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.